In today's video, we're gonna show you how we built a DIY rotating camera rig and some of the cool shots we've been able to get with it. So real quick, have you signed up to get your monthly King of Random project? Hit the link in the description to get signed up and let's start today's video. Hey guys, not too long ago, we saw a really cool video that was made to demonstrate a very fancy high-speed camera and it involved this fancy rig in a whole black room with crazy lighting. The camera would spin around fast while it was taking pictures of something in the middle and it just had some amazing shots in it. And I saw that and I thought, I wish we had one of those. And then I thought, maybe we can have one of those. The sort of rig they were using, I don't know if it's a commercially available or if it's just something they had an engineer build for them but overall, like they had a whole room just for doing this stuff. And it was gorgeous. But it was not within the, the time and money that we wanted to throw into it to get these shots. So I started looking at what we could do to do it ourselves, and I'm pretty happy with what we came up with. I wandered around the hardware store for just probably an hour and a half or something, just trying to find all the pieces and figure out what could work. The basic idea, though, is that everything we need comes from a hardware store, except for the camera itself and the one camera mount. We already had those, and a good camera is not gonna be super cheap. This one is called the RX100. It's what we usually use for slow motion shots on this channel. It's a decent little camera. It has some things it does really well, some things it struggles with. The best thing about it is that it does do almost a thousand frames a second, and it's fairly small and compact. Uh, and we had just a mount for it, little ball mount, rotates around. It's not too heavy, so we don't need a huge rig to hold it up, yeah. even with a counterweight. So this right here, this is the, the main part of the operation. This is the hardware that goes to what's called a Lazy Susan. If you've ever seen those on a kitchen table, normally there would be a piece of wood or granite or something attached on top of this. You can put things on it and then you just spin it and you can pass things around the table without having to reach really far or pass it from person to person to person to person. And I thought, hey, those spin, they're not super expensive. I bet we can make one of those work. So these are just from a sliding drawer, yep. just the inner mechanics of a drawer. Yeah, you can put one of those on either side. It slides really nice and smoothly. They do come with like the soft clothes and stuff like that. That's fancier than we needed, but it's just got some bearings on there. It extends quite a bit and I thought that would work really nicely as well. So we needed to figure out how to put these together. And you may notice I'm saying things in the past tense because I actually built the whole machine to see if it would work and then took it apart so I can show you how we built it. Overall though, it, it goes together very quickly. All right, let's There's take a- There's a lot of shouting in the studio that day. <laughs> I was very excited. <laughs> so really quick, let's just talk about the other hardware we have. There's not much left of it and then we can start putting it back together and seeing how it works. Here's the basic idea. Using some low cost supplies from a local hardware store, we're gonna show you how we built a spinning camera rig in less than an hour. So, Lazy Susan, drawer slides, got a couple of those. Here we just have some screws with the nuts that fit onto them. I think those are uh, 3 eighths of an inch long. Clamps, these are pretty tough clamps. They take quite a bit of power to open and close them and that's good, but they're still cheap. They're like less than $3. These are just nylon spacers. It's literally just a tube of plastic. These are screws. I think you're probably familiar with those. L bracket. And then we just have a little bar of aluminum. I specifically got a bar of aluminum that fits inside this channel. So I actually measured it this way, thinking that maybe I would mount it on the inside. In the end, I actually just bolted it right onto the top and that worked great, but the size is good. It fits really nicely. So this is it. This is all of the main parts. We then have two more things we're gonna use. One is just a circle of wood. We had some MDF and some plywood lying around at the shop as well as some scraps of some two by three beams. And those are what we're gonna use as just the base and the shooting platform where we're actually gonna watch everything. So the first thing is we wanted to know how we could mount the camera to this ring but still have something in the middle that we could film on. My thought was that if we could have the camera a little farther away and maybe be able to go up and down, that would give us a little bit more variety of what we could film, how tall it could be, how high the camera could be, all of that. And that's where these drawer slides came in. My thought was we could mount these just a little bit offset and I wanted two of them for balance because if we have the camera on one side and especially if it's extended out and higher up, that's really gonna throw things off. So I thought if we had two drawer slides, we could just have them go in opposite directions and that would even out the weight so it should keep spinning nicely. The Lazy Susan comes with holes for mounting to, you know, you're supposed to put a big circle on top of it so you can pass things around your kitchen table. Uh, the holes in the Lazy Susan hardware don't quite line up with the drawer hardware that I got. 
So I actually just drilled a new hole into the Lazy Susan hardware. So this was already here and this was already here. This second hole right next to it was not there previously. So I just used a drill bit and a hand drill. And I drilled holes in both sides that line up pretty nicely with this. So now I have a hole right there that lines up with the hardware and a hole right here that lines up with the hardware. And all I need to do is use a couple of these screws and nuts and attach it down. That will hold our drawer slide in place. All right, this should now be pretty balanced. However, it's not going to spin because those screws that we just put in are actually sticking out lower than the base. So now those screws are just sitting right on the table. We need to elevate this whole thing and attach it to the inner smaller wheel. And that's what we're gonna put on our main base. So this is our base. This is just a flat slab of plywood. And I've got these two pieces of two by three beam that I've already cut, glued, and screwed into place in the bottom. Got four screws going in through the bottom, holding everything sturdily in place. This circle that I drew kind of represents uh, where we have clearance, where those drawer slides are not going to hit everything if we have it all properly lined up. So to be able to spin, you can see we've got some extra clearance here, but there's a reason for that. These drawer slides move in and out pretty easily, and if we had our wheels spinning normally with nothing securing them, it would just move. That's why we have these clamps. The idea is just that we can set this distance wherever we want, right up close or wide open. And we just take a clamp and clamp it right on. That holds it well enough that it's not going anywhere. However, it also adds more onto the bottom. So what we needed to do was lift this whole rig up high enough that those clamps had clearance so they wouldn't be rubbing on the board below. So that's what these are for, these little nylon spacers. Again, just little plastic pieces of tube or what's gonna hold everything up. We're just using those to lift the whole ring higher than it was. Looks good. Now we've got some screws and these are the hex head type screws, so I gotta make sure I use the right bit. So we're just going to drive this down. There's holes in the hardware for the Lazy Susan and then there's bigger holes in the top so you can access the smaller holes in the bottom. It's all very clever. Lazy Susan is quite sturdily attached to our baseboard. Let's give this a test spin and we don't have the clamps in so I suspect that our drawer slides will move out a little bit. They did, quite a bit. And now they don't slide out. So this is all working out great. So this is cool, Works but so far it does work beautifully but it doesn't have a way to mount the camera to it. So that's what we need to do next. That's why we've got this aluminum bar. We're just going to have a piece of it lines up with some of the holes on this hardware, bends at a 90 degree angle and just comes straight up. Here's our L-shaped piece of aluminum. It can line up with our sliding hardware and you can see I've also added lots of holes that line up with this L-bracket hardware. So we can put it there or there or there or there. And then with our L-bracket, we can mount this right onto it. And this is what attaches to the camera. And because it's a ball joint, we can make sure it's pointed and angled just where we want it, regardless of how high it is. So what we did is we just cut a circle out of MDF board. And that can just go right there. All of our camera gear can spin right around it. So we should be able to now have this spin, make sure the camera is focused on the right spot. And then while it's spinning around, filming in high speed, we can see whatever's going on there. While we rotate, what? <laughs> awesome. I love it. We can use this as an actual table, but MDF is a little bit ugly. So we can also throw some other things on top. We could use just paper. We could use a different piece of wood. We've got a piece of masonite with like a slick kind of black coating on it. And I think maybe we should just cut one of those out and then we can just have that sitting right on top. I think that'll look good. It's whatever works. But I think first we should do a test of just something really simple. Maybe just dropping some screws down onto this while it's spinning and see what that looks like. So here's what we're gonna do. Callie has a handful of screws. We're gonna drop those down. Our cameraman set the camera to record at about a thousand frames a second. What is it, 960? 960, so almost a thousand frames a second. We turned off some of the studio lights because some of them flicker, so we've only got the ones that don't flicker. I'm gonna take the camera, spin it. Callie's going to drop the screws. After they drop, I'm going to catch everything and hit the stop button. The way this thing works is it's actually constantly recording at its thousand frames a second. But when you hit the stop button, it actually only saves the last two to three seconds before that. So while it might be recording a lot, it's just recording it and then throwing away everything after three seconds ago. So I'll spin, you drop, Kay. then I'll catch it, 
and stop the recording and that should save it. All right. You got clearance? Go for it. All right, here goes. I hope it was fast enough getting that. <laughs> and the problem is, is when you're working at a high frame rate, it's usually because, oh, we got it though. There it is. Beautiful screws falling and bouncing. Perfect. Catching the light. Circling it. And we're spinning around. I think we need to start doing some really cool stuff with this. We do. But first, we need to give it a good base. Where's my circle? So this. This is just a piece of masonite that has sort of a, it calls it a chalkboard surface on one side. It's quite plasticky. It's very water resistant. And so we can just have this sit right over this circle. We know that the X is almost perfectly centered, so we can just focus on that and then we can just set this right on top. Anything we want to put in the middle of this is going to look really cool. Okay. Awesome! Ooh, splashes in circles! That looks so good! Alright, different background setup. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing! So good! <laughs> yeah, no, that's like perfect. That looks amazing. That's so fantastic. Let's do a bunch more stuff. Let's do it. Oh no. Oh, go, go, just go, go. Yeah, let's just do it. Ooh, it's beautiful. The color's completely wrong, but it's beautiful. Still looks it's, awesome. It's like orange. Yeah, that's the same as the cap. The cap looked orange too. There we go. <laughs> I think I got it, I'm not positive. Ah, it smells like 4th of Yay. July. Well, that's gonna be an interesting shot. I am so happy <laughs> with how this thing worked. That is seriously some of the coolest footage I think that we have ever filmed. That was... Amazing. That was mind blowing when we were first seeing it, just rendering. That was gorgeous. Guys, now we have this rig. Is there anything else you want to see us film on this? It spins, it's in slow mo, it looks really cool. So, if there are other things, things that we've done in the past that you think you want to see us do on this rig, let us know. Or even things that you've never seen us do, if you've got new ideas for us, let us know in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Did you know we have a monthly subscription that sends you a fun project every month? Click the box down there to go check it out. We'll see you there.